Hey there Toy Collector friends and Doctor Who fans alike. Welcome back to the channel. I'm the Time Travelling Toy Collector and this is Doctor Who The Collection Season 19. Now, I know I was said I was going to do uh, one of these every month, uh, which I am doing, and apologies for this one being a little late in the month. The reason being, uh, I've been holding off because I thought, I hoped against hope, that there might be a fresh announcement for the next instalment of um, the Archive Collection limited edition range, but alas, it has not been forthcoming, so I've proceeded um, with the next entry into the range. I've also decided to make a slight adjustment to my initial intention, which was to go through in order, um, because I realised that would then take an awfully long time to get all of the different Doctors in. So instead, I've taken the decision that I'm going to go through the first seasons of all of the Doctors um, as released, and then pausing when we get a new release released um, and cutting that one into the, into the series. Then once I've gone through all of the Doctors that have been released, I'll go back and resume filling in the spaces, which hopefully then will mi mix it up a bit and not make it, you know, month upon month of the same Doctor, for example. Um, just to just to give it a little bit of spice, a little bit of difference. Um, so I hope I hope that doesn't disrupt your viewing pleasures. Um, it just means it will have um, all the doctors covered in a shorter amount of time, and then we can start infilling the uh, the other seasons um, across the complete collection um, as and when things are released. So that's uh, the change to the rationale. Just thought I'd take. Um, a moment to explain that and to explain why this one was slightly delayed. Um, plus, it's been a very busy month so far with various different things. Um, Comic-Con, uh, lots of new items being received. Uh, so watch the channel, lots of exciting things coming. Um, lots of new Star Wars stuff being released by um, Hasbro as part of the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi. Uh, lots of new Transformers things coming out, some retro Transformers things that I've managed to pick up. Uh, and some previously unreleased Star Trek stuff that um, I've been able to get my hands on as well. So whilst we're at this juncture, a subscribe to the channel would be amazing because then you'll never miss a future video looking at any of the things that could constitute some of your favourite uh, genre or toy collectible ranges. Um, anyway, I digress. Let's get on with the main event. And right now, the main event is Peter Davison's first full season as The Doctor, which was season 19. Um, and again, it's a really lovely uh, front. Uh, we've got, I've left it you know, inside the uh, slip case, which is there for protection purposes. I'll take that off in a second. Um, we again have that uh, very sleek, very slim line approach to the collection which makes it such a space saver um and of course and i know this is a recurring theme and i apologize um but it also makes it a real investment piece because as you're about to see when we look at the rear and we see all of the things that are included yes you get all of those stories so you get castra valva fort of doomsday kinder the visitation black orchid earth shock time flight um, you get all of those included. You get all of the original um, DVD extras included, um, which, you know, are all included here. But you also get all of these new features included as well. Now, I'm not here to review the content, um, merely the, what the, the physical media looks like and the quality of the collectible product, because it's a limited edition product. Um, and I'm, I'm very here for that, and I love this this uh, artwork uh, based around uh, well based around several concepts really because you've got elements of Logopolis you've got elements a little bit of the um, well, looking into the future one could argue the future regeneration of the Doctor we're not even we've only just starting his first season um, so again in terms of value for money uh, a lot of people quite rightly because it is a considered purchase I must say go well this is you know it's a it's a nice set it's nice to have that sort of continuity of color scheme um there's almost a mother of pearlesque uh sense to the the packaging that sort of tardis interior lighting 
uh, which I really, I really like. And of course, the quality of Lee bindings, I think it's Lee bindings, um, artwork on the front and on the interior, which we'll see in a moment. Um, it's just a fantastic piece, a fantastic release. And the whole range is really, really top notch. Um, so without further ado, let's take off the, so you can just see what it looks like. In case, you, this, in case this happens to be the first one of these videos you see, I, I leave the slip case on. The slip case is purely uh, so that I've got a little bit of additional defense um, against the, the base of the box as it's in the, in the shelves of my, um, I was gonna say bookcase, which is probably, probably actually quite accurate. Um, so here we have the full illustration and we can see uh, the fifth doctor uh, surrounded by some very lovely artwork. Uh, he's wearing his decorative vegetable. Uh, there we see Anthony Ainley as the master, having recently taken over that body in the previous season. We get a Terra Leptil, uh, we get a Cyberman making a surprise return, and a bit of a portent of doom. We've got a badge for mathematical excellence there in the Doctor's hand. And we have one of these guys, whose names I can't remember, uh, from Four to Doomsday, who are hurtling towards the Earth um, to do bit of harm frankly because you know they're, they're not they're unpleasant reptilian types um so yeah again the beautiful spine continuity of appearance absolutely love it and on the back we have what is now traditional um a sequence involving the appearance of the tardis um and that's the tardis as driven somewhat recklessly by uh the doctor and in certain instances tegan but uh, that's enough about that. So let's get into, I'll move this out of the way so it doesn't get in, in, doesn't interrupt this next part. Let's get into opening up the set. So as ever, we get within the set, um, lovely disc section here, where you get all of the stories uh, complete with their, apologies for being upside down, um, detailed illustrations that relate specifically to the stories in question uh, and then they go right through to the end we get an additional bonus disc with some of the special features and that's a really really lovely segment then as has become uh, traditional we have a shot one way or the other of the TARDIS over here in this instance it's the the doctor getting himself into all sorts of entanglements there um, but the TARDIS you can see there is the, the planned Velcro panelling that lays across the doorway of the TARDIS, which means we can open it like this, which then gives us that piece of artwork from the slipcase, which is the Doctor coming out of the TARDIS at its jaunty angle from uh, the visitation, uh, the companions scattered around, and the Master. So really the key players, the key recurring players for this particular uh, series. We open it up, there's the booklet which we'll take a look at in a second and again we have quite the nice diorama of the TARDIS console room uh, which the fifth doctor has inherited. Um, so let's take a quick look. Ooh, that's gone a bit wonky as expected because it's a bit top heavy. Um, so here we have the booklet. Again this is specifically produced for the the set and i know these these things aren't cheap i do get that you know because we all we have to earn, earn our cash to pay for these things and you don't have you know no one's making you get them especially if you've already got them on on dvd there's no reason to go out and get them if you don't want them um the blu-ray treatment for them and you don't want all the new extras and the new packaging that is you know it is a considered luxury purchase but also for some viewers they've missed out on the dvds and this is their only opportunity to go back and and capture that classic series so it's horses for courses really so this hopefully will just give you an insight into whether or not it's a box uh, that you want to pick up um and for that reason alone if it's helpful in helping you make the decision or making you realize you've made the right decision um then like the video as i mentioned earlier it's uh you know a small click for you but a massive help for me uh so you know we've got lots of artwork there's lots of information you can see all the special features listed very nicely 
um, there's comments on the updated special effects, a uh, bit of background to the production designs. Uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff. Some of these are previously released back, uh, behind the scenes photographs. There's some illustrations. It's a very, very high quality, very glossy, information packed little booklet. And the beauty of it is they didn't need to do it. You know, this was not something they had to do, but they chose to do it. And I think that speaks volumes because this is, again, representative of a very much loved institution uh, in the sci-fi world. And I think it's very easy to write it off as a cash grab. Um, and, you know, cynically, maybe it is. Maybe there is a bit of a cash grab element to it. But personally, I don't think it's that straightforward. Um, and also, to be perfectly honest, the, if the if the corporation that produces these needs to, you know, they have the they are entitled to make money. It's you know they are a business, so that's one thing. Uh, and as I said, if people have already purchased um, various iterations of these stories, they're under no obligation to purchase it again. That's a personal choice. It's a personal choice I've made because I think this is the most well um, curated set of classic stories that I think we will ever get, you know, until they're creating some sort of hovel, uh, sorry, uh, hollow um, virtual immersive realisation of the stories. I don't think we're going to get much better than this. And also, I don't think we'll get the quality of the documentaries and the range of documentaries and behind the scenes discussions and informa and interactions with actors and crew and um, writers and directors and costumiers and makeup artists etc because time is moving on and I think some of the early sets where we're going to be seeing some of those stories in black and white um, even some of the early 1970s stories <sighs> Well, you know, time is a cruel mistress, so there's possibly some stuff from the 80s as well that we won't, have, we we will never be able to have some interviews because the the people we want to speak to or hear from have gone, they've they've, they've left us. Um, but this collection and the commitment that we're seeing from the contributors to this collection means that those who are still around are going to be drawn in, we are going to hear from them. It is going to be almost like a once in a lifetime collection, you know. And I think in some ways it's sad that it wasn't done earlier to capture some other people's input. Um, but there'll be archive material that could be included as we, we've seen already, it does include all of the archive material. But I just think it's a fantastic tribute to what is a wonderful, wonderful show. And so this has been season 19 maybe you picked it up when it first came out uh, maybe you weren't sure if you were going to pick it up or not but either way i think it's a lovely introductory season for for peter davison's fifth doctor um i think it's very very nice how it carries forward the storyline from the end of the previous season and having been alive and lived through that transition from tom baker into peter davison i can vouch for it feeling like the longest break between the end of a series and the start of a series in living memory. Uh, I'm sure there was, there's been longer elsewhere and possibly in uh, newer Doctor Who we've, we've felt it even more. But this felt so, so long. Um, and for a lot of us, certainly me, this was the first time I'd actually lived through a regeneration um, rather than only seen it in repeats or things of that nature. So I suppose this holds quite a special place. Season 18 and 19 hold quite a special place in my heart because the, they're the ones I actively remember and particularly this season because this was aired um, over Tuesdays and Thursdays, I think it was. I think it was um, uh, in the early 80s. And I remember uh, for a variety of reasons being actually at my grandparents' um, after school and into the evening uh, watching it <clears throat> so it really does again one of the one of the reasons it's a collectible and of emotional significance to me as a collectible is it's a, it takes me back in a heartbeat 
to a very specific time and place in my life. And again, that kind of drives all of my all of my collecting or most of my collecting, I think. Um, so has this helped you decide whether it's worth having a, 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 sh a shifty around online, see if you can track down season 19? Don't forget, if you don't want the bells and whistles of the of the limited edition version, there is a standard release Blu-ray version with it all on. You just don't get the, um, the sort of slightly swanky um, limited edition packaging. Um, well, then that's what I'm here for. I want this to show you the quality of what's on that, um, the co in terms of the range of content that's now included in this, from a limited edition point of view, the quality you're getting there. I, funnily enough, before filming this, I did have a look um, on online auction sites for some of the uh, the seasons, and this is, you know, as we're looking at this in July 2023, um, some of the prices are quite shocking. I mean, we're talking three-figure digits to get some of these collectible limited edition box sets. So I'm not suggesting you suddenly go out and buy five of the next one, but it, it really does fascinate me how, and of course, the minute anything is a limited edition, this becomes the case, um, how as soon as it's gone, people realise that they wish they'd got it sometimes. I mean, I that was certainly, as I think I've told the story before, my experience with the first one, the first Tom Baker season, which was the first one released in the collection range. And I was so close to not picking it up at all. And then thought, actually, I'm going to regret it if I don't. And it was one of the times I'm so glad I listened to that voice because that voice absolutely knew what he was talking about. And so subsequently I've collected every single one since um, and eagerly await the next one. Um, however, no news on the next one yet. Hopefully it'll be along soon. Um, in the meantime, I shall be back with the next uh, in my series of looking at the Doctor Who The Collection, um, which will be the first season of the sixth Doctor, uh, as portrayed by Colin Baker. So again, just to remind you, if you've watched this and you don't already do so, please subscribe to the channel. That way you'll never miss a, a video on any of your favourite genre type collectibles or toys, um, past and present. Um, as well as some discussions around the future from time to time. Um, and please like the video if it, if it has helped in any way or it's shone some light on what you may have missed and now you're going to try and find it. Yeah, please like the video. It really, it's a small click for you, but it's a real big help for me. Thank you once again. You've been a fantastic audience. Thanks for spending the last 18 or so minutes with me. I've been the Time Travelling Toy Collector and this has been Doctor Who The Collection, Season 19. Um, just remains for me to say thank you very much for sticking with it. I hope to see you in a future video and that a thing of beauty really is, in most cases, a toy forever. Take care. Bye bye for now.